Hello everyone, my name is Fenrin and today we're making gems. Now, sparkly gems might look intimidating at first, but they're really not that bad and can be done rather quickly. To start with, I have this piece of armor and I want to put a large emerald where the green diamond is. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to my tools and use the gem facets tool. This is a free Clip Studio paint tool and I'll put the link of where I got it in the description below, but it's honestly perfection. All you have to do is pick two colors you want to blend together and start drawing where you want your gem to go. Now I'm using a clipping layer just so that the brush doesn't draw everywhere on my canvas, but I keep drawing and adjusting the colors until I get something that I think will work nicely. Once I'm happy with my gem detail, I remove any extra brush strokes outside the diamond shape and unclip it. From here on out, we're going to be making a lot of layers, so get ready, but it's all going to work together to make the gem sparkle and shine. To start, we'll make the flat top surface glow. Create a copy of the base gem layer and shrink it down to the size you want. This will be our guide layer and I'll name it as such. I also add a red layer color to it to remind myself that this layer won't be part of the rigging process later on. Once you have the guide to the correct size, create another layer and call it Top Shine Mask, as this will be the mask layer in Live 2D. Clip it to the top guide and select the airbrush tool. Now, paint in a soft glow. Anywhere that is white will allow the shine to appear in your Live 2D rig. The brighter the white, the brighter the shine. You can of course make the whole shape pure white, but I like to have some variety in my reflections and shines. I feel like it adds more depth and realism to the model. Next, add another layer called Top Shine. This will be our actual shiny streaks that show up on the model. To demonstrate, I'll paint a bunch of lines to simulate what it could look like. Simply right click on the Top Shine mask to select that soft white brush stroke you did and then click the mask button to create a mask from your selection. Untick the linkage between the layer and the mask, and now you can move the shine freely to see what it'll look like once it's rigged. This is a great way to play around with different line styles, brush hardness, and stroke sizes to get the appearance you like. For my emerald, I thought the brushes were a bit too harsh here, so I quickly redid it with a softer airbrush. I think this more closely gets the result I'm looking for, so I'll be doing the rest of my shines with a softer look for the entire gem. Next, I want to add shine to the sides of the emerald. So again, we're going to go back to the original gem diamond shape and create a copy of the layer. Let's call this Side 1 Guide. Since we don't want to add any more shine to the flat center, we can use the gem top guide to quickly remove that whole section. Next, we're going to remove the top right and the bottom left sides of the gem, as we'll do those later on. You can remove them with a quick use of the eraser tool. When you're ready, right click on the size one guide and select the full guide shape to create a new layer. You can call this side one mask. Again, we're going to use the airbrush to paint in a soft gradient. The reason we're doing this with the selection turned on is so that our airbrush paint doesn't go everywhere. Gems have nice sharp edges, so we want to emulate that look as best as we can. Now, just like we did previously, we'll create another layer and call this side one shine. And with the airbrush, draw out some shine lines. Again, I'll use this quick test method by creating a mask to see how it will look and test out the movement before I go to Live 2D. I even rotated it and test shines at different angles to see what will look the best. The less swapping I have to do between programs, the more time it saves me. Finally, we're going to create a guide, mask, and shine layers for the last two sides of the gem using the steps we went through before. Create a copy of the base layer, delete out all the parts we've already created shine masks for, and then with our final guide selected, use the airbrush to create a mask. I call this Side 2 Mask, and just for consistency, I turn on the other layers to make sure the intensity matches across all four. Finally, I create my last shine layer and give it a test. You may wonder why I'm not just copy and pasting the shine layer three times, but that's because variety is very important. It's what makes things feel unique. If everything looked and moved exactly the same, the viewer would notice the patterns and it would attract their attention in the wrong way. Instead, I like to keep things as unique as possible, as very little in the real world is a perfect pattern. Now, I'm just going to quickly color code all my layers for you. Red is a guide layer and it's not something that will be rigged. Purple is a mask layer 
and yellow is your shine. Be sure that every purple mask layer has the name mask in it. And every yellow shine layer says shine, or else everything will get extremely confusing in Live 2D. For extra bonus points, try to match all the names like I did. It'll make matching up all the pairs in your VTuber rig a million times easier, especially when you have 200 to 300 layers with a full model. Now, if that's all you need for your gem, or you're trying to conserve layers because you're on the free version, you can stop there. However, if you want to add some extra dimension and sparkle to your gem, there's a few more things you can do. And spoiler, it involves more masks and shine layers. Okay, let's start with a new layer and call it Gem Glow 1 Mask, as we're going to be working on making the inner gem pop. Go back to your original detail layer, and with the selection tool, set the tolerance to something quite low. I set mine to 5, as that's what worked for my coloring and shades. And select the brightest part of your gem. The wand should select every part of the gem within that range. Now, go back to your Gem Glow 1 mask layer, and fill that selection with white. This will be our mask for the brightest parts of your gem. Create another layer, and label it as your shine layer. Previously, we did the long stripes for our shines, but this time we're going to do something a little bit different, as we want the gem to sparkle rather than look like light is moving across it. So using the airbrush tool, we're going to create lots of dots all over the area. You can play with the hardness of the dots and the sizes because it will all depend on the look that you want. But in the end, I went for a really soft look as that's what best fit the look I was going for. Once you're done, create another layer and call it Gem Glow 2 Mask. Again, use the selection tool on the detail layer, and this time pick a mid-range color to select and fill it with a solid tone. I'm using yellow here to visually show the difference between the two masks, but honestly, the color doesn't matter at all. You can pick anything you want. Next, create a shine layer for the selection and draw all your dots all over again. Except this time we want something a little more special to happen than just white shine to appear. Change the layer type from normal to add and select everything on the layer. And use the color wheel to change the white to a different color. As you can see, I'm playing with various greens to see what might work best for my gem. You can even go to a different color if you want to have some cool tones, but for this emerald, I'm sticking with green. Once I find a color I really like, I redraw my circles with the airbrush, since I messed them up a little with all the color testing, and gave it one final movement test. Here you can see the effect is subtle, but it really starts to make the gem look 3D. And here, I'll turn on my layer so you can see what dots I've drawn if you're curious. Finally, create one final mask layer and call it Gem Glow 3 Mask. And with the selection tool, select the darkest parts of the gem. Create a shine layer and this time select black as your airbrush color as we really want to draw the depth of the gem. Create your dots all over your page and set the layer to multiply. Here, when I do a sample test with the mask, you can see just how much it really darkens the gem and will add a great effect when it's moving. If the black is too intense, you can always adjust the opacity. And don't worry, you can tweak this in Live2D later while you rig. So that's all the layers I'm going to make for this gem. You're more than welcome to add more or less depending on what your gem looks like or needs. But if I color code all the layers, I have three red guide layers, six purple masks, and six yellow shines. With all of this done, I'll save the file as a PSD and bring it into Live2D. Okay, here in Live2D, I have very, very quickly rigged the chest plate of armor for this YouTube tutorial. It's not perfect, but it's a good enough of a base to show this gem on. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete out all the layers called guide. We don't need them at all. Next, take all of your mask layers and quickly drop them on top of your gem detail layer as you want them to move with your gem exactly. For now, I'm just leaving them as a basic art mesh, but feel free to auto mesh them or custom mesh them if your rig needs that. Finally, we need to link our shines to our masks one by one. Simply click on a shine layer and in the clipping ID, match it with the corresponding mask layer. It's a little tedious, but it's important to link them up exactly. Next, I make sure my shine three layer is set to multiply still and my Shine 2 layer is additive. This sometimes doesn't transfer over from Clip Studio Paint automatically, so it's always good to double check. Finally, you can play with the layer opacities if you want to too. 
One final step is that the shine layers should all sit outside any of your movement deformers. To handle this, I create a top level model deformer. This deformer has no parameters linked to it, but just serves as a final container to hold everything miscellaneous. Rather than having all your art meshes floating around at the bottom, mix in with things I haven't rigged yet. Now finally, when we open the physics and scene budding settings, you can see the gem move and shine. Again, this is just a basic gem, and you can add as much complexity as you want. Extra shine layers, tiny dots for glitter and sparkle, whatever you can imagine. Also, don't forget to go back and experiment with opacity settings to brighten or darken various elements if you want to tweak and adjust things further. And if you really want, you can always re-import from Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint if you want to make the even more changes. But otherwise, you're done! I hope you find this tutorial helpful. I know there are a lot of layers and masks to keep track of, but you can do it! Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd love to see in a tutorial video. Or come check out my streams over on Twitch where I rig and answer questions live. Otherwise, until next time!